Okay, so with after watching that video with Mount St. Helens, uh, that's what happens when you have a magma content that has a lot of silica, right? It could become very explosive and very dangerous uh, versus the opposite where you have less silica content and it can be far less viscous and uses more like a liquid. Uh, and, and I'm not saying that like there's no silica uh, in here. There's still a lot of silica content in this lava. That's uh, probably at least half. Um, there's just a lot of other stuff that's in there to kind of balance it, balance it out where there's less silica versus like Mount St. Helens, that kind of magma that's coming out of there is very silicious. It's very sticky uh, and very explosive due to that. <clears throat> but the Earth's crust is still made, mo made mostly of silicate minerals. Fed feldspars are silicate minerals. Quartz is, is a silicate mineral. There's a lot of silicates. Uh, there's a lot of SiO2 silicon dioxide in the Earth's crust. So let's get into uh, volcanic hazards. We'll talk about gas, the tephra, the pyroclastic flows, uh, lahars, and lava. Uh, so the gases from these eruptions itself can be dangerous. Uh, if you ever visit uh, Volcano National Park on the Big Island of Hawaii, uh, they'll actually have some sections closed off occasionally based on where the wind is blowing because they have these vents around that uh, volcanic crater, which will spew gas, and it can be dangerous, and it can kill you. Um, yeah. But uh, these pyroclastic flows, uh, the way they happen is you'll have this huge eruption, and what you don't see, you see these clouds, right? And these clouds are, they're mostly steam. A lot of what comes out of volcanoes is actually water. But um, there's, there's a lot of steam in this, and there's a lot of this material, the, the pieces of that lava inside this cloud and first they'll explode up and then gravity will take hold and they will flow back down and out and down the sides of the mountain or in the case of Mount St. Helens they'll blow out the side. But uh, this stuff can move about as fast as a jumbo jet flies about four to five hundred miles per hour. It's not something you drive faster than, it's not something you can outrun. Um, it's, it's extremely quick and extremely deadly. You don't want to be near this stuff. It's very, very hot inside this cloud, uh, much hotter than it gets in, you know, inside your oven. It's probably around 1,000 degrees inside this pyroclastic cloud. Uh, on top of there being obnoxious gases and just it being very hot, there's lots of pieces of things. There are large molten rocks that are being blown out of this, and those in themselves uh, can, of course, be extremely deadly if you get hit by one. Uh, as they mentioned in that video, uh, what was it? The, the Mount St. Helens eruption was the equivalent of 1,500 Hiroshima-type atomic bombs. Uh, these pyroclastic flows can act like an ex atomic explosion and just completely wiping out uh, a city. Uh, lahars are a really dangerous part of volcanoes that aren't really appreciated enough. I believe lahars kill a lot more people than pyroclastic flows or any other uh, hazards that volcanoes create. So what happens is you have an eruption, it melts a lot of the ice and snow that are on top of these very large volcanoes, these very tall volcanoes, and that stuff comes flowing down uh, all the rivers, all the creeks and everything, and it just overwhelms them. They flood, it picks up everything and the way it picks up the soil, picks up the trees, it picks up the rocks, and it's moving along with them. So it becomes this giant, muddy, liquidy landslide, and they will extend really far out past the volcanoes. So here we have uh, a map of uh, northwest Washington state. Here's Mount Rainier. This is about the area where the pyroclastic flows would affect if Mount Rainier would ever erupt. Uh, so about five miles out in any direction. But you have these other areas where the lahars could potentially flow and cause a lot of damage. Uh, I studied Ording quite a bit. Uh, in a college geology class, and the people that live in this town have to have emergency procedures and they practice for a lahar if it came flowing through and destroyed the town. And I think the kids, even in the schools, you know, a lot of us probably grew up having fire drills. Well, these kids will grow up having lahar drills, and they'll have to get on the bus really quick and drive to higher ground. Um, but it could really affect these areas. And places like Tacoma, Washington, I mean, this is a large city. Uh, this would affect a lot of people if this were to erupt. And at, at some point, it likely will. 
And then, of course, the lava itself uh, can be damaging. This is from a recent eruption in, in Hawaii. They, this type of flow moves very slowly. It kind of creeps along at, you know, at walking pace. So you can, you know, come up and take a picture of it. But uh, still very damaging. There's not really, you know, you can't really stop this. This is rock that is slowly creeping along. It is extremely heavy. Uh, and you can't put, like, barriers in its way. It's just going to push barriers out of the way. Uh, I think I'll attach this video. This is just a neat video of some guys that went down into a volcano or into the caldera of a volcano with some drones and just kind of shows you. Um, and then they talk about some of the dangers present, but it's it's a neat short little video. So let's get into talking about the different types of volcanoes. So first off, uh, how volcanoes work, you've got magma that comes up and it will come out uh, usually you know, in a caldera. Sometimes there'll be vents on the side. And this stuff will, the, the lava will erupt out and then it will solidify. And this happens over and over and over and over and over and over again until you get these layers of basalt. Uh, basalt is the stuff that usually erupts out of uh, volcanoes, at least volcanoes that have this oozing lava. Um, and it'll just build up the mountain. It'll build up the volcano. So you can have vents on the side of volcanoes. You have these pipes that are on the inside. You have the crater or caldera at the top. Uh, so not always eruptions happen at the crater, and they can also happen on the on the sides. So here we have a, a little crater there, and there's a big caldera there. So this is a volcano sort of within a volcano or beside a, another, another crater. So here's these different types. There's shield volcanoes, there are composite volcanoes, and cinder cones. So let's let's talk about these. So shield volcanoes can get huge. Uh, the tallest mountain on the planet is a shield volcano. Now that is not Mount Everest. Mount Everest is the highest mountain on the planet, but the tallest mountain on the planet is actually the big island of Hawaii because it starts at the bottom of the ocean and has built itself up and is now 14,000 feet above sea level. But if you measure the whole thing, it's like, what, six miles tall, I think. Uh, pretty, pretty tall. Uh, and they get very, very big. Uh, but you can see kind of this broad sloping shield shape. So here you're on top of one, and there's another one off in the distance. So I actually took this photo on a flight. Uh, the two big shield volcanoes that make up a big island. So here is Mauna Kea. Nice big shield shape, and behind it, Mauna Loa. You can see that shield shape, so they kind of disappear at the clouds. Uh, on one of the smaller shield volcanoes on the side, this is in the Kilauea, where a lot of the active eruptions happen. You can kind of see that broad shield shape, gentle slopes. The reason uh, these have these gentle slopes is the type of magma that they're erupting, the type of lava that they're erupting. It doesn't have as much silica content, so it oozes out. It doesn't have as much silica content because it's coming out of the oceanic crust. And oceanic crusts don't have as much silica in them as continents do. Continents uh, are basically these giant, I sort of think of continents as like the ice cubes of planet Earth. They just float around on the surface. It's the really, it's the lighter rock, it's the lighter elements, it's the lighter minerals that float around on the surface of the planet. Um, but it's mostly made up of silica. Silica is not a very heavy compound, it's not a very, it doesn't make very heavy minerals, they're not very dense, uh, but they do make these really kind of sticky chains that are hard to break apart, and so we get this really explosive magma that can come out of uh, volcanoes on continents. But out here in the middle of the ocean, on the middle of the oceanic plate, you get this oozing lava that comes out that doesn't have as much silica. Now these little volcanoes right here are not shield volcanoes. They are something else. They are in a big shield volcano. You're actually in a big caldera here on Maui. So you ever heard Oprah lives on Maui? She lives on basically on the other side of this ridge. Um, <clears throat> these are not shield volcanoes. We'll talk about those in a second. But I also want to talk about this. I like showing Hawaii because there's something really odd or, or interesting going on with Hawaii. It is formed by a hot spot. You have this hot plume in the mantle. Uh, it comes up and then melts the lithosphere, or melts the Earth's crust, and this material comes up and creates the islands. 
Now, over time, the Pacific plate, the tectonic plate, it's, it itself is moving off to the northwest. So when these islands pop up, they get carried away. And it creates this huge long chain. And so the, the normal Hawaiian islands that people go visit and go on vacation to and live on and all that, uh, those are just, you know, right there. But and those are these right here. But there's been other Hawaiian islands throughout, throughout Earth's history that are much, much older. Uh, but unfortunately, they've they've been eroded. They've they've been pushed down beneath the waves now. A lot of them, and so they're just seamounts. But kind of kind of neat. But this isn't the only place that this hot spot exists, or that, that a hot spot exists. Uh, but this is a hot spot in the middle of an oceanic plate. There are hot spots underneath continents that act a little bit differently, and we'll talk about that later. So. Love talking about this. Here's Mars. There are volcanoes in other places that aren't Earth, right? So Mars has the biggest volcano in the entire solar system. It is right here. Uh, it is called Olympus Mons. And there's some other few other shield volcanoes. If you take a second to look at this picture, you can start to spot them. There's a little one right here. I say little. This is huge. Uh, that's about the size. Of, uh, yeah, that's about the size of Arkansas. There's another one there, another one there. Looks like there's another one there. These are huge, huge shield volcanoes. If we took Olympus Mons and put it on North America, it's about the size of Arizona. So bigger than Arkansas and much bigger than any volcano uh, on the earth. How big is it? Well, not only is it big in area, it's also tall. Uh, it's about 15 miles high. 15 miles tall versus our big island of Hawaii, which is about six and a half miles tall, or Mount Everest, if you measure it from sea level, is about five and a half miles tall. Um, huge, 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 huge volcano. And you may ask the question, why? Why is it so big? Well, basically our biggest mountain could be bigger if we didn't have plate tectonics because all the stuff erupting out of the crust here gets carried off. Well, on Mars, that's not happening. There's no plate tectonics. It's like Mars tried to have plate tectonics, like right here, uh, this valley. It's, it's, it's like the crust tried to split apart. It did split apart, but it didn't fully split apart. Like plate tectonics didn't quite get going on Mars. There's either not enough water or there's not enough mass. It just didn't quite get plate tectonics. So it's, Volcano as it erupts, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because it's not getting carried off uh, like Hawaii would. <coughs> so here's another comparison. So this is basically uh, Mount Everest up here is the highest point on the Himalayas. And so there's the Big Island of Hawaii, and there's Mount Fuji, which is a composite volcano, which we'll talk about here in a second. There's a small little cinder cone. We'll talk about those. But there's huge Olympus Mons. So on to uh, cinder cones. Actually, we'll talk about cinder cones next. Cinder cones are really small. Uh, they're not that big. They're just these little small volcanoes that kind of spurt out these little pieces of, of lava, and they kind of just shoot them out, shoot them out, shoot them out, shoot them out, and then they'll kind of cool as they hit the ground, and they're sort of built out of a lot of small rocks. If you know, if you're a gardener, you might know what cinder is, um, or if you grew up on playgrounds and McDonald's many years ago, they used to have cinder all around their playgrounds. Uh, but it's just this little blocky rock. We'll look at some of it. Another good name for it is called scoria. Um, but anyway, they're these smaller volcanoes. And sometimes you'll find them on larger volcanoes. But they just kind of shoot out uh, these smaller pieces of, of lava. And they cool off on the sides. So, tender cones. Uh, I showed this picture earlier in the lecture. Uh, so this is Waikiki, and this is a diamond head. So this is uh, a cinder cone that's actually kind of eroded out. So it used to have a much higher peak, but the, the magma chamber collapsed, and boom, so the middle kind of collapses in on itself. But this, uh, you, can, you can go inside this thing, and it's eerily quiet. You've got this huge bustling city right outside, but you can't hear it at all when you're inside this, this crater. It's blocking the sound. But uh, it's a small cinder cone. And not to talk too much about Hawaii, but, you know, we don't have much for volcanoes here in Arkansas, so let's talk about Hawaii. 
Uh, but you can spot the remnants of a bunch of small cinder cones if you look on this map of, uh, of Oahu. So a bunch of smaller cinder cones. So this is Diamond Head. This is what we're just looking at. We were up on this hillside looking down at Diamond Head. So another cinder cone erupting outside of some city or inside some city. I'm not sure where this is. But you can kind of tell it's it's a lot smaller. It's not a huge, ginormous volcano. Uh, here's another one. This one is in Arizona. This is called Sunset Crater. Uh, good name, right? Kind of looks like a sunset. But you can drive up next to this thing. There's a road. I've done it. You can hike up it. And I think this one, this one's fairly recent. Um, I mean, a lot of those Hawaii volcanoes are very recent, but this one I think last erupted maybe 600 years ago. There were Native Americans around when, when it erupted, and I believe they uh, there's recordings of it, or, or Native Americans actually were recorded something, somewhere, I think, uh, of this thing erupting. If I remember right, I'll let somebody else check my history on that. Yep, so kind of a standard volcano. But uh, let, let's get into um, the next one. Composite volcano. So this is kind of what a composite volcano uh, would look like. It's much taller, much steeper sides. And this is sort of your iconic volcano. So I believe this is Mount Fuji in Japan. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure it is, but I'm not certain. And there's another one back here. A huge composite volcano. Also called a stratovolcano sometimes. So here's some more. I took this picture on a uh, another flight similar to that uh, that original photo at the very beginning of this lecture. Uh, this is again Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, and then Mount Hood and, and Mount Adams um, back there. I forget which is which, but uh, you're kind of looking down that line of volcanoes in the, in the northwest. But these are all composite volcanoes, and if they erupt, it's very explosive. There's another one. And like I said, they'll have these very explosive pyroclastic flows, these explosive eruptions due to that silica, due to them coming up from underneath a the continent. They've got a lot more silica content. It makes the things more explosive. I keep mentioning this because I will test you on it, and it is important. So another volcano. This is actually my better half, Danielle. Uh, you will probably meet her on the field trip if you come on the field trip. She's also a geologist. But uh, if you ever go to Seattle, I highly encourage you getting on one of these ferry rides. It's eight bucks to cross the sound, and it's free to go back. And if it's a clear day, you get to see Mount Rainier off in the distance that just looms over Seattle. And it's just very ominous. Uh, you know, you, you can't help but worry about that thing if you live there. So those are kind of the different types of volcanoes. Um, where do we find them? Well, every one of these little triangles is a volcano. And the ones we'll find out in the middle of oceanic plates will typically be shield volcanoes because they have that less, they're, they're made of less silica and they'll kind of ooze out and you get these big shield volcanoes. But these ones that are here on the continents, they're mostly composite volcanoes. And what's going on here, you may have heard of the Ring of Fire, right? The Ring of Fire around the Pacific. Well, what's going on is the Pacific Plate, the Pacific Ocean is shrinking. All the continents are kind of coming in on it. And you've got subducting plates all around here. So the oceanic plate is being subducted underneath all these areas. And then it's melting and coming back up. And that some of that, some, not all of it, but some of that material is coming out of these volcanoes. And you get these huge arcs of volcanoes, sometimes on continents, and sometimes as island arcs. When they're island arcs like this, they're usually less, less explosive. Not always, but usually less explosive than what you'll find uh, on the continents. So Indian plate here, you can tell that it's being subducted underneath. I think this is Indian plate. There might be a smaller plate right here, but it's being subducted underneath here. And what's going on in Africa is this isn't a place where it's colliding, it's actually the opposite. The Horn of Africa is trying to split off. It's moving off to the east while the rest of Africa is moving off to the west. And you've got volcanoes that are coming up in the middle and erupting and sort of creating more, more crust. 
So someday this is actually going to be split off uh, from Africa, and there'll be another small chunk, kind of like Madagascar. So Madagascar used to be connected over here, and it's split apart. Uh, let's see, other things. Iceland is a giant hot spot, but it's also on this mid-oceanic ridge where the Atlantic Ocean is getting bigger, or the Atlantic, uh, I don't say Atlantic plate, but the Atlantic Ocean is, is spreading apart because there's uh, new magma coming up from underneath here. In fact, that's something you don't really see on a lot of this map. Is there are likely eruptions happening all along these mid-oceanic ridges where new oceanic crust is being created. Now, not all of these volcanoes are erupting, uh, only some of them are. Uh, and this is actually a little map I took of today. So I'm making this lecture on January 31st, 2020. Uh, these are currently the volcanoes that are erupting or are just sort of barely erupting or in sort of in danger uh, of erupting. Well, what about Arkansas? Well, some of you may be thinking, well, I don't see anything in Arkansas. And I know there's that diamond mine down there in Murfreesboro, and that was volcanic, wasn't it? Well, yeah, it was. But it was a very long time ago. There's no volcano there anymore. Uh, it's basically just a, a field that's a different color than the fields around it. Um, but here's what happened with that diamond mine. So you had an a slightly different type of volcano that I haven't talked about. Uh, it's called a mar, and it's basically just sort of a single event, or only a couple events, where you have magma that comes up, it's under pressure, and then just explodes out real quick. And so one of those used to exist uh, down there near Murfreesboro. I think it erupted, uh, I can't remember, it's like 100 million years ago, or 150 million years ago, a long time ago. Uh, but the magma source came from quite quite deep in the earth uh underneath the surface of the earth and you know you've heard oh diamonds are created under a lot of pressure well there there you go it actually you have to go pretty deep as from a magma source to get diamonds that are forming and there's a lot of carbon content in this magma and it rose up and erupted out well after 100 million years or 150 million years whenever this thing was you had a lot of erosion after the fact and it eroded off all this material to way down to where this pipe, basically the volcanic neck, is sort of left over, and there's these diamonds that are left over from the, the center of this, this what's called this kimberlite pipe, or a, uh, I don't think it's actually a kimberlite pipe in ours, it's slightly different, it's called like a limb, it starts with an L, anyway, it doesn't matter, but you'll find these uh, diamonds out there, and these aren't very pretty, right? Like, that's not very pretty. Well, you have to cut diamonds to make them pretty. You don't find them already nice and cut. Uh, you find them like this. And this is actually a pretty big, this is a big one. This is worth a lot of money. But normally you find them much smaller. They're discolored. They'll be fractured on the inside. And they're, they're worth maybe 15, 20 bucks. Unless you find some bigger ones. Maybe they're worth 100 bucks, something like that. Um, I do, you know, it's a neat experience to go down there and do that. You're basically digging in a field. Uh, if you guys want to ask me about it in the class, I'll bring it up. I'll bring up kind of the website. We'll look at some more pictures. Um, Definitely worth doing once you pay five or ten bucks or something. They go let you dig around for the day. Uh, but what I really would recommend instead of doing that or after you do that is go to the quartz mines uh, for twenty bucks. It depends on the mine you go to, but for twenty bucks, uh, you go out there, you can dig through a whole bunch of dirt, and you just come back with a bucket load of really beautiful quartz crystals. So uh, I, that's, I tend to recommend that to people instead of going to the court, the diamond mine. It's cool to say, yeah, I went digging for diamonds, but Man, I've been there so many times. I've been there with a whole bunch of other geologists, and nobody ever finds anything. Um, and maybe we're just not going at the right right time, but <clears throat> even if we were to find something, it just wouldn't be that impressive, most likely. So that's that's Arkansas. Uh, these are some more, more modern uh, Mars, that special type of volcano where it sort of just erupts once or twice and you're just kind of left with these little little craters in the landscape. And these are pretty common in certain parts of the world. I think this is in Europe somewhere, but you know, you'll find these. Uh, you know, when you find one, you'll you'll find multiples. 
So those are the different types of volcanoes. Uh, I do want to talk about uh, this, which is the volcanic explosivity index. The volcanic explosivity index. I'll probably test you on this. I think it's important. It's a way we measure how damaging a volcano is or how powerful a volcano is. And it depends on how much material comes out of the volcano. So zero to seven. Um, Mount St. Helens, which we watched that video on, was basically a, a low five. It threw up about a cubic kilometer of material of lava and rock and ash. A lot of it was probably ash. But a cubic kilometer. Think about how long a kilometer is and then turn that material into a cube. Um, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, as we go farther up the list, you know, we get into 10 cubic kilometers, 100 or 1,000. Yellowstone was about 1,000 cubic kilometers. Uh, it's the sort of thing that can cause local extinctions. Uh, you know, if Yellowstone went off today, it would be an end of the world sort of thing. I mean, people wouldn't go extinct, but a lot of people would, would die and it would not kind of knock out society and, and it would be bad. Um, and we'll talk more about Yellowstone in a little bit, but there's these other eruptions I actually think uh, we should pay more attention to. These are the types of eruptions where they can cause a volcanic winter. Uh, and I'll sort of, I think I'll post a discussion on that on Canvas, or at least we'll talk about it in class, uh, where, you know, and, and I believe it was this one, 1815, this thing erupted, and there was a, a year without a summer, and that's kind of what it was called. And it it uh, caused famine. I think it was the last time there was a famine in the United States. Uh, and it was caused by a volcano that erupted in the southern hemisphere. Uh, so on the other side of the planet from us, it caused us to have, you know, it was snowing in July sort of thing, like literally. Um, anyway. Um, you notice here, this goes up to 100, so it kind of shows these circles. Uh, Yellowstone, 1,000 cubic kilometers. That doesn't even show the circle. It would be about as big as a screen. <coughs> so, what about supervolcanoes? Well, basically, they're big old volcanoes. This is a neat video. I'll attach this in Canvas. It's just a lot of fun. It talks about Yellowstone and, and kind of how it's preserved fossils through its eruptions and really unusual fossils. Uh, so this is a big complicated map. I'll break it down for you. So here's sort of the, the miniature version. It shows you where it's at. So there's Utah, Nevada, Wyoming, and Idaho. And so here's this little square. And so this is where the Yellowstone eruptions have happened. They always, they haven't always been right here. Well, they've sort of been right here. Let me explain that. Yellow, the Yellowstone volcano, super volcano, is a hot spot, just like Hawaii is, but it's underneath the continent. It has these really big explosive eruptions because it's kind of coming through the continent, which again is really silicious, a lot of silica, right, and can be super explosive. Well, the North American plate is moving over time, just like the Pacific plate is. So about 13 million years ago, there was an eruption here, the Pacific plate moves some more, then there's eruption here, and the Pacific Lake moves some more, and then eruption here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And you can actually kind of see this uh, if you look at a satellite image from Idaho. You can kind of see where, where this occurred. Um, but now, this is kind of where things are at. So these are the, uh, the areas where ash uh, were carried off to at the various Yellowstone eruptions. Uh, and so you can see it got all the way over here to Arkansas. For comparison, here's that Mount St. Helens in 1980, uh, not as big an area, right? Um, if Yellowstone were to go off, uh, it could potentially put, you know, up to a foot of ash even here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, or Northwest Arkansas. Uh, and you're talking about, you know, a meter of ash in Denver. I mean, can you imagine putting that much material uh, on these places? Um, it would just... It would be bad. Uh, ash is, you know, it's not like the ash that comes out of your fireplace. It's literally volcanic glass. Uh, it's small, small pieces of volcanic glass because it was lava. It cools very quickly. And, you know, as soon as it comes out of the volcano, it cools. And it's these little shards of glass. You don't want to breathe it in. Um, and you can imagine if that gets into your car, that would be really bad for your car. Uh, 
you know, if you got any air intake and you started to combust the stuff, it, it destroys engines. That's why airplanes won't fly into ash plumes when volcanoes erupt. And it's one of the reasons we watch volcanoes quite a bit uh, is because when these volcanoes do erupt in these really remote areas, those plumes, those ash plumes, if a plane flies through that, it can destroy their engines. Um, in fact, there's a eruption recently. Um, I forget exactly where, but uh, in the Southwest Pacific, uh, where they had to kind of watch out for that. But uh, anyway, I personally, I, I pay a lot of attention to sort of natural disasters and the likelihood of them happening. I think it's really interesting. There's a lot of, you know, TV shows out there that would talk about Yellowstone. and Oh, man, it could happen any day. And it's like, yeah, it kind of could. Um, but, you know, we could get hit by a giant asteroid any day, too. It's just the likelihood of it happening in our lifetimes is super small. Um, you know, could it erupt next year? Probably not. Could it erupt in five years? Okay, maybe. Could it erupt in a hundred years? Yeah. Could it erupt in a million years? Yeah, it's probably going to erupt in the next million years. But is it, I mean, a million years is a very, very long time. Uh, personally, I'm more worried about the smaller volcanoes like Tambora, the ones that erupt more, there's more of them and they erupt more frequently and they put up enough material to cause, you know, a year without a summer sort of thing. And that can be really damaging to society by itself. And they are much more likely to happen. Uh, in fact, they happen about once every 500 years or, or so. And of course, that last one was uh, Mount Tabora in 1815 or so. Um, I think society should pay a lot more attention to those than, than stuff like this, because this is just... It's not likely to happen, at least not anytime soon. Uh, something else I want to mention. Uh, so there's these other volcanic events, and this is an area of geology where it's it's still being studied really heavily, and the effects of these. These are called flood basalts, or uh, they'll create what we call these volcanic provinces, and there aren't any active in the world today. It's something that's happened a number of times in the past, but it's sort of its own flavor of super volcano. Instead of being really explosive, this is where lava will just ooze out all over the place, and it will just be this huge province of volcanoes and just create all this this material that just flows out of the earth, and it can put a it can change the climate fairly quickly when these things happen. Uh, we know that these, I believe this one and this one, were going off uh, when the dinosaurs went extinct. That's one of the reasons you see volcanoes in pictures with dinosaurs, even though dinosaurs lived for a long time. These things were going off at the end of the age of the dinosaurs. Uh, and we think dinosaurs were kind of already on their way out. They were under a lot of pressure uh, due to a changing climate because of these huge flood basalts. Uh, I believe these are called the Deacon Traps, and this was the Siberian Traps. Uh, and then, so they were already in trouble. There's already a lot of pressure on them, ecological pressure due to changing climate from this stuff. And then, boom, a big asteroid hits in the Yucatan and sort of finishes them off. Uh, and a lot of the other life that was around uh, during that time period. We can talk more about the dinosaur extinction later on. It's a lot of fun for me to talk about. But um, but these, we now, you know, there is a lot of extinctions in, throughout Earth's history. It wasn't just the dinosaur extinction. There were other extinctions, too. And we will... Definitely talk about those in, those, in this class. Um, but we're starting to think that these had a lot to do with them. All of the, not all of these, but some of these huge uh, flood basalts. And so here's kind of what they look like as, as rock layers. It's just these huge layers of volcanic rock that will flow across the, uh, the landscape. And they're, they're still present. They're still out there. More of those layers, so these are all layers of flood basalts. Uh, basalt is a type of volcanic rock, so it's an extrusive volcanic rock. It's basically, um, it's not super, there's not, it doesn't have a high silica content. Uh, it's got heavier minerals in there, darker minerals, so it's usually a black type of rock. Um, and we'll, we'll look at it in class if we haven't already, or if you haven't already. 
And I think that's all about I'll cover for this uh, for this lecture. Um, and so we'll start looking at these actual rocks in class and start uh, classifying them, and we'll, we'll talk about what's what uh, and kind of get a handle on these rocks. And like I said, it's it's not too too difficult. Uh, it, it's actually pretty intuitive, and hopefully you will find it interesting. So get on Canvas. I'm sure there'll be discussions on Canvas talking more about this types of stuff. Uh, and then watch the other videos that I've I've posted on here.